It's Monday on Monday, where I am long on thoughts, but short on time. Ladybird, so much here. The power of being given a name, the lie of shame, the artistry of friendship. But today, I've just got time to not screw up my life. What do I mean? Well, let's go. So overall, why did Lady Bird resonate? And why was I not cringing with every step that our impulsive protagonist took? Why did I almost feel cozy, if not safe, as I watched every sweet and annoying thing unfold? Well, I think the answer here is a two-parter. One, the love, and two, the relationship between her and her mother. The love Mother McPherson has for her daughter is unconditional, while the relationship itself is experienced in very shakeable ways, conditional to every mood and moment. They fight, pick out dresses, celebrate together, hide from one another, say mean things, do kind things, all anchored by a love we are never meant to question existing in the story. Hence, for the story's own purposes, me calling it unconditional. So, if the love is perfect, then the expression, the relationship, is imperfect, to say the least. Now, because this story starts with that theme and then revisits it consistently throughout, it's as if a safety net has been cast over Lady Bird's entire experiential world. Nothing in this story is to exist outside this net, this true safe intimacy. No highs or lows with anyone come close to the highs and lows mother and daughter experience together. As a result, I never feared for Lady Bird's choices as dire danger. The love given her allows her to screw up her decisions and choices without screwing up her life. Now, before I wax poetic, more on that in a second. Simply put, by setting these parameters for me as a viewer, I was invited to experience her teenage invincibility from the inside. I didn't stand voyeuristically on the outside, judging and fearing, but I came alongside, experiencing, laughing, if maybe at times apprehensively. Almost like following Hamlet as Horatio. Not sure that I exist outside her telling of the story? Oh, conspiracy alert. Sorry. I don't want to open that can of worms. Let's move on quickly. Where was I? Um, uh, screwing up my choices, not screwing up my life, coming alongside. Right, got it. Uh, so, for example, she breaks school rules, but I never feared for her education, only the impact of her mother's reaction. The emotional, intimate crests and troughs she experiences with her boyfriends never reach the same fevered pitches of those we see with her mother. They exist rather inside this ever-present intimacy net. Ironically, exposing how intimacy is not created by things like sex or quiet stargazing moments, but rather seeks to exist before those moments. Her relationship as friendship, then, with Julie becomes a playground, where the lessons learned by and with her mom are applied to a contemporary, someone without authority, allowing Lady Bird to give and take authority as she sees necessary in those experiments, trying out new experiences, new friends, trying to get out of Sacramento, her mother becomes the Sacramento she supposedly wants to get away from, only to discover in bits and pieces how thankful she is for both of them. Part of the takeaway here for me, finding this story resonatingly lovely, is that it feels like a signpost. Not the thing in and of itself, but a sign pointing to a longing. And not just for a perfect love, which, let's be honest, sounds like a saccharine greeting card, but a longing for the expression of it in perfect relationship. And the hope that when inside it, we may indeed be screwing up our decisions and choices, but we needn't fear that we are screwing up our lives. Unless, of course, you like frying a turducken in the backyard. That's on you. If you like these essays, check out more dives underneath the pop and pop culture on my channel. Link in the description. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. And that's my Monday. Now back to yours.